it just feels like this huge chunk of my life is gone. The worst part is that I miss him. That I don't want to miss him because he's happy somewhere else. Four months ago, I was in a six-year-long relationship with someone I thought I would spend the rest of my life with. We met in Montreal in 2013, where we spent our first two years together. In 2015, we moved to Korea and we spent our third year traveling around Asia. After that, we were in a long-distance open relationship for three years. It was a risk that we were willing to take because we were committed to each other. In April of 2019, he moved in with me in LA. I thought we were finally going to be together, but I was wrong. After only two weeks of him being here, everything fell apart. He just left. I spent six years with him, and then he fell in love with someone else. It just hurts because I was so sure that I was gonna be with him. And it took us this long to figure out that we're not right for each other or that he's not happy. The day he left was the worst day of my life. And I knew I had to do something about it or else I would stay miserable and paralyzed. So the first thing I did was reach out to friends that have gone through a breakup. What were things you did to move on from your breakup? When my seven year relationship ended, I muted him on all my social media. Because I knew I needed time for myself. I decided to put all the things in one box. Write a letter, burn it. Got rid of everything that reminded me of him. To put myself out there. I took the first trip by myself. Dinner by yourself. I took up writing. I started to enjoy silence. One of those things was getting a septum piercing. It freed me from everything and it made me happier. After talking to friends, I decided I need to complete three goals in order to move on. Goal number one, give myself permission to feel. I need to keep opening up and just talk about it. It's just so hard to say goodbye. Goal number two, accepting self. I need to relearn to love myself and do things for me. Goal number three, saying goodbye. I need to complete this task in order to move on and just close this chapter of my life. In order to complete goal number one, give myself permission to feel, I decide to speak of a life coach in order to dive deeper and understand my emotions. When you think about what's keeping you kind of suffering in this breakup, what's the main sticking point for you? He was confused and maybe if I've done something better before, his judgments would be clearer. Sometimes I feel like regretting pursuing my goals, being here. Why wasn't he happy with me? I was so sure that I wanted to be with him. Mm -hmm. um, he was my best friend and I felt like he knew me. I understand how painful this is. You're making it mean a lot of things about you. People make their decisions based on what's going on for them, more so than what's happening for the other person. You said something very key about your relationship with him. You said, I felt like I could be myself. That part of you that push and be the best all the time, that that softened a bit and you could just be you. Yeah. That relationship had to end so you can internalize this. It's so hard to say goodbye, but it's so important to say goodbye because the person that needs to accept you, Lillian, is you. There's nothing you could have done differently. This was the result that really was for your highest good. After speaking of Christine, I definitely feel lighter. I need to stop blaming and torturing myself for something that is beyond my control and just focus on loving and accepting myself. Goal number two. Accepting self. For this one, I knew I had to push myself out of my comfort zone and do things that scare me. One of those things is to get my first tattoo. My friend told me his story of traveling and just getting tattoos after his divorce, and that really inspired me. So I want to get a tattoo to mark the next chapter of my life. This is my first one. Are you down to get another tattoo? Because I will literally fly out to New York so we could get them together. It will be great. I'm New York. Let's go make tattoos together. What tattoo are you getting today? I've been thinking of getting a moon face tattoo right behind my back. I'll be getting a tattoo of my cat. This is my first tattoo, so I'm really nervous. Does it hurt? People always overthink, but it doesn't hurt at all. You're in good hands. Ready? I don't. I'm ready. The stencil's on, and there's no going back. One, two, three. How does it feel? The pain's not that bad. You're gonna get hooked after this. 
This breakup made me think of the moon phase and I thought that was perfect. The moon changes and it's going through different phases and it's just like how humans are going through life. We just keep evolving. I chose my cat. His name was Matt Ross. We were living for 21 years together and he passed out a few years ago so I decided to memorize him by having a portrait. I feel like it's like a therapy for yourself, overcoming something big. People usually come if something happens and they want to have that captured. Tattoo, in my opinion, is the only thing you're going to take with you. All right, we're done. You can take a look. Wow. I really like the details. Wow. That's very cute. Thank you. I love it so much. Awesome. <laughs> Congrats for your first. It still hasn't sunk in. Like, I still can't believe it's there. I'm so happy we did this together. After that, I want to push myself even more and do a no makeup nude photo shoot. Why could I give him what he was looking for? It makes me feel like I'm worthless. And I know it's not my fault. You know I didn't do anything wrong. I feel like this is a really important aspect of what I need to learn after the breakup. I definitely felt not good enough or not pretty enough. I have my hair up all the time. Maybe I just don't put makeup anymore. So this is really like challenging myself and trying to look beautiful without makeup and my hair tied up. I was worried that my photos would look flat. Looking at the photos after it's been shot, they look great. The photo shoot helped me feel empowered and in control of my body. This is who I am and I shouldn't change that for anyone else. Goal number three, saying goodbye. I decided to do a final walk in his neighborhood and solo dine at the restaurant where we had our first date at six years ago. On my way to the restaurant, I stopped by his old apartment. After work, we would commute together and walk to his apartment, and even though right now this is not a place that we would hang out, this is still a place that means a lot to the relationship and the stories that we've built. I could actually remember vividly this place. I only knew these places because of him, so I felt anxious being there by myself. We've only gone together. I remember the tables have little drawers underneath, and there was a bunch of papers that people have left poetry, little notes, drawings. So I want to go there. I just want to write something that could be meaningful for someone else that reads it. So I wanted to write this note similar to what my friend's mom told me, which really helped me process things. She said, when you're in a five or ten year relationship and that ends when you're in your 20s or 30s, it feels like the end of the world because it's such a big chunk of your life. But when you're in your 50s or 60s and looking back at it, it doesn't feel as important because there's so much more that you experience later on. So I wrote, I realize it's the end of the relationship and it feels like a really big deal right now but I'm excited for when it feels like a pleasant memory. After I've lived more of my life, our six years together will only feel like a fraction. I'm glad I went to the restaurant. It wasn't as awkward or as bad as I thought it would be. I was glad I enjoyed myself and I just wrote that message. While I was sitting in the metro, I started to feel a little sad because I started to remember him, to remember us. This reminded me that our relationship wasn't always bad. There was a lot of happiness. I don't regret meeting him. And I'm so grateful that he allowed me to be a part of his life for the time that we had. After the whole experience of being back home, it was really emotional, but it was also the closure that I needed. This whole journey was very therapeutic, and I know that I am doing the right steps to move forward. I'm still sad, obviously, because I'm not over him, and I know that takes time. And all I know is that I am on the right track. What would you say to him right now if you had the chance? 
all that it hurts is say goodbye. I'm just like so thankful and happy that I had him in this chapter of my life. There's gonna be a light after this tunnel and we're we're gonna be we're gonna be okay. If you are going through something similar, this whole process sucks. It's a really awful feeling, but it's a part of being human. Don't let that paralyze you. Just do the best that you can. You'll eventually be in a much better place.